Mixing vocals as an amateur musician can be very, very challenging sometimes, and a lot of you guys aren't aware of some of the secrets that us engineers use to get thicker sounding vocals. Whenever people are sending me their mixes to listen to, to review, or whatever, I'm always noticing something very common happening, and that is the vocals sound very thin and not as present as they should be on a track because at the end of the day, the artist is supposed to be the vocal point of a song. So in today's video, I wanna do something very special for you and I wanted to show you how I achieve thicker sounding vocals using parallel processing and more specifically, parallel compression. Are you ready? Let's go. One of my favorite ways to achieve a thicker and more upfront vocal sound is to rely on parallel compression. Now the way that parallel compression works is you basically have two copies of your vocal sound. One is a dynamic, less compressed version, so that has all the differences in volume between the loud parts, the quiet parts, and ultimately this is the one that gives you more of the impact because the dynamics helps that vocal hit more in a way. But then at the same time, you have a duplicate of it, which is gonna be heavily compressed or squashed. And what that does is it basically increases the average volume, but it's also getting rid of the dynamics and the impact that you're getting from the original sound. So by bringing those two together, the dynamic and the hyper compressed version, you're gonna achieve the best of both worlds. It's gonna allow your vocal to cut better on smaller listening devices, but it's also gonna have that impact because you have that original uncompressed sound mixed in there, which is creating some differences in volume and that lets it hit more. Now before I show you what this looks like I wanted to please ask you to please subscribe to the channel smash that like button and share it with somebody you know if you find this video helpful at the end. You doing so helps this channel grow and reach more people and I would really love for you to do that and I appreciate you for doing that as well. But let me show you what this looks like in context. So I've got this vocal track here and I'm gonna play you the whole thing in context. And maybe what I'll do is I'll actually mute my parallel compression first and then I'll show you what it looks like in context. So this will be the track, just the original vocal sound, the dynamic vocal sound you could say. And let's just see what that sounds like. Five. I don't know what to say, just pass the J up on the left side. These days these people talk, they quick to tell you what's on their mind. Problem. So let me play this again, but let me put in the compressed sound with it and show you what that sounds like. Five. I don't know what to say, just pass the J up on the left side. These days these people talk, they quick to tell you what's on their mind. Problem. So right away, way more impactful, way more in your face. You know, it's exactly what I described and exactly what I was hoping to get out of this. And it makes sense. I set this up in advance on purpose. So let me show you and let me also label here what each of these things are so you guys have an idea. But ultimately what we're doing is all of our vocals is going to this bus that I've labeled premix. So every single vocal, all the vocal effects, everything ends up at this bus and then it gets split between these two which I've labeled premaster 1, premaster 2. Now premaster 1 has a light compression on it and the premaster 2 is the super compressed version. Now, to break down what we're doing here, and just to give you a few pointers, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna to try to use the same compressor. And that's just because every compressor induces its own amount of latency and little things like that. So you want it to be consistent. So if you add one compressor and it induces latency onto the light compression, you wanna have that mirrored onto the super compressed one by using the exact same compressor. In this case, I've chosen to use the Renaissance compressor from Waves. Uh, I definitely recommend that whatever compressor you use, you use one that gives you access to all of the features of a compressor, such as the threshold, attack, release, and gain. Um, so I'm using this one, but you could also use like a FabFilter Pro C. You can use the stock compressors for most DAWs. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily advise you using an LA-2A because the LA-2A is an opto style of compression with preset or prefixed attack and release settings that you can't manipulate we want to be able to manipulate those so that's an important note to consider here and that's why i've used the r comp now on my light compressor let's just take a look at that first i'll mute my uh you know super compressed version and let's just see what i'm doing here i've got a two to one ratio 
I've got a very slow attack, I've got a medium release, and I'm adding about 2 dB of gain, but you're going to see when I play this that based on the threshold I've set, we're losing about 2 dB of gain. Maybe a little bit less, but that's roughly what we're dealing with. These extra features, they may not be on everything, but I am using the opto mode and the warm mode and the arc. Um, but, you know, don't pay too much attention to this stuff. Just really pay attention to the uh, attack release ratio and the gain. Let me play this and check out what's happening so far. Five. I don't know what to say, just pass the J up on the left side. These days these people talk, they quick to tell you what's on a mind. So in a way, I can actually potentially dial down this gain a bit, you know, but I like sometimes adding a little bit more, adding a little bit more color, you know. Um, but nonetheless, you can see that we're probably barely even losing a dB of volume. It's really just catching the loud peaks. And ultimately, it's just trying to make everything a bit more glued together um, rather than doing anything crazy, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Let me mute that now. Let me unmute my super compressed version and show you what that sounds like. So check this out and then I'll break down the parameters, but here they are. Five. I don't know what to say. Just pass the J up on the left side. These days these people talk, they quick to tell you what's on a mind. So in a way, this one's set somewhat opposite of the light compression one, right? And by that I mean we have a very aggressive ratio, about a six to one ratio. So that means for every, you know, six dB of gain that goes into the compressor, one is going to cut, uh, one dB is going to come out. So it's essentially cutting it into a sixth, right, and of volume, right? Anything that passes the threshold that is. The attack is extremely fast. It's the fastest setting we could set it to, and the release is super slow. So it's grabbing the transient right away, squashing it, and it's holding on to the compression the entire time, right? It's not letting go, it's not easing up. So there's not gonna be any pumping, it's just gonna be squashed and stay squashed, all right? Now, as you can see on the gain reduction meter, the threshold, I've set it up so that we're losing upwards of 10 dB of gain. I'll play it really quick one more time just so you can see what level we're hitting here, but pay attention to the gain reduction meter here five i don't know what to say just pass the j up on the left side in fact we're almost hitting 12 right sometimes we might even be hitting 12 but it's not always super consistent so i've dialed the gain up by 10 so i'm reducing it by as much as 12 but i'm adding 10 db back to make up for that loss right just to show you what i mean if i get rid of the gain and play this you'll hear you know exactly how compressed it is five to say just pass the J up on the left side these days these people talk they quick to tell you what's on a pretty significant reduction and then I'm adding the 10 dB of gain somewhat scientifically because I know how much volume I'm losing but you know let's check this out I'll play it again and a b it with and without this compressor five to say just pass the J up on the left side these days these people talk they quick to tell you what's on a mind problem is I don't care what's mine is yours I share it all and I can't call it but ain't stopping to lie so in a way there isn't really too much of a volume dip when I'm bypassing the compressor it's essentially matched in a way it's very close it may not be exact but that's not really an issue. What we're trying to do is essentially just get a very, very compressed, squashed version of this that matches the original volume and then blend the super compressed version with the light compressed version that I've initially created here. So let's put them both in now and let's see what we got. Five. I don't know what to say, just pass the J up on the left side. These days these people talk, they quick to tell you what's on a mind. Problem is I don't care what's mine is yours, I share it all. And I can't call it, but ain't stopping till I got it all. Five. Let me play it again, let me take this super compressed one out and then just put it in halfway through so we can hear what the exact difference is. Five. To say just pass the J up on the left side. These days these people talk, they quick to tell you what's on a mind. Problem is I don't care what's mine is yours, I share it all. And I can't call it, but ain't stopping till I got it all. Five. So hopefully that makes sense. You can see how I'm blending the two of them together and ultimately achieving a much more cohesive, louder, fuller sounding version. And 
The reason why that is, is again, because I have that dynamic version, that light compressed version with the super aggressively compressed version and I've blended them together. If I wanted to take this a step further, or if you want to take it a step further, you can then play with the you know, volume of each of these and find a better blend. If you want it to be a bit more dynamic, you can reduce the volume of the super compressed one or vice versa, just figuring out the blend between the two. And as you may be wondering, I decided to separate these into two separate aux buses that are ultimately processing the same signal differently on each aux, but you could also technically, if you have a compressor that has a mix knob, you could basically dial in a super aggressive version of compression on that compressor and then dial the mix knob down to ultimately find a better balance while only using one bus and one compressor. I like it this way because it's a little bit more flexible. I have a lot more control, but if you're lazy, you could do it the other way and achieve equally as good results. Hope you got value out of this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Share it with somebody you know it's gonna help. Every time that you hit the like button and share it with somebody, it's gonna help my channel reach more people and help you sound better in the process, so I appreciate you for doing that. I'm looking forward to helping you again soon, and I'll catch y'all later. Peace. Five.